Three, we now go over to our international news editor, Sophie Mukwena, who is standing by. Sophie, good morning and thank you so much for making time for us. We just heard there from Natasha Pire outlining the purpose of uh, this visit, but you're standing next to the Minister of International Relations there, Naledi Pando. Well, as you heard from Natasha, there is quite an important meeting where you have uh, two leaders uh, leading governments in different countries uh, simultaneously going to have a meeting with the head of state of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa. These countries are quite important to South Africa. These are countries that supported South Africa during apartheid. When you look at Netherlands in particular, you know that it was the queen of the Netherlands in the 60s, 60s who took a decision that uh, she was not going to visit uh, South Africa under the apartheid government. You know the relationship uh, in relation to South Africa and also the Netherlands culturally it is quite important but she took a decision then that she is not going to visit South Africa until South Africa was free. That is why the former president, the late former president Nelson Mandela, when, she, when he was released from prison, uh, the Netherlands was also part of those countries that were prioritized in terms of him visiting those countries. Today, issues are different. You have a, a better diplomatic relations because uh, at government level, there are sound uh, relationship. But to talk to us more about this important visit, uh, Minister Dr. Naled Pando, International Relations, is here to speak to us. Minister, are you still jet lag from Ukraine and uh, Russia? Well, uh, good morning, uh, Sophie, and morning to the uh, viewers of SABC. I'm train lagged, actually, because we had two very long train rides, and I cannot remember when I last had such a long ride on a train. But uh, we're back home uh, safely and have had a very uh, good series of meetings in both Ukraine and Russia. Before we speak about uh, today, let's go back to Ukraine and Russia. You, the president uh, and other leaders, including officials from other countries, you met with the two leaders. How did it go? Was it a success or it was fruitful? Well, Sophie, I think it's important to always reiterate this is a peace mission. And until we get to a point where a negotiations process is underway, we won't really say that uh, we've had success. But what the success is, is that there's an opening created mm -hmm. and a clear willingness indicated for continued uh, engagement with African uh, leaders in this uh, peace mission. So. We had very um, open discussions, uh, sometimes very robust, uh, which was good because uh, both leaders uh, were frank uh, with our own uh, delegation, but we were, through our presidents, equally uh, open and frank. And so I think uh, the mission has been received very positively and this commitment from both leaders for continued uh, engagement. You have a 12-point plan from China that was presented by President Xi Jinping. Uh, he did send the diplomats. You also have uh, Turkey, as President Vladimir Putin pointed out, that was able also to bring the two parties together at official level. Mm -hmm. How are you going to pull all these initiatives to ensure that uh, the world speaks in one voice, to ensure that you are able to get a permanent solution, because if you have these pockets of interventions, uh, the, the two uh, warring factions will decide who they listen to and who they don't listen to, and finding a solution will be a problem. Um, to some degree, I uh, felt that the existence of a number of proposals was of great help uh, to the mission in that in uh, putting together what has now been called the 10-point proposal uh, by the African leaders, we were really synthesizing what has come out of all the uh, processes you've referred to. But linked to that, we've also been very clear 
that this is a process. It's not just an event. It's not a one event uh, a matter. So really, in the end, it will be a culmination of processes and mm -hmm. of parties. We've called for a larger involvement. We've said it cannot just be Africa. And we would want to see, for example, the United Nations mm -hmm. through the Secretary General playing a very important role, as well as other leaders, including those who support one or other mm -hmm. of the countries uh, that are at war at present. So we see this as a, a very a broad uh, process uh, which will involve a multifaceted uh, uh, set of strategies and interventions. Minister, on the issue of uh, uh, President Putin, this was an opportunity for the president to engage him in relation to BRICS. Any movement on that front? Well, you know, I'm no longer in primary school, so I don't show and tell. Um, and uh, I have indicated that really I believe that discussions between the two leaders, they did have uh, opportunities to have at length mm -hmm. uh, meetings between the two. Mm -hmm. President Ramaphosa will be the one who speaks on this. And Minister, the, the other thorny issue was the issue around the logistics. DERCO does play an important role in preparing for such uh, missions or such visits by the president, particularly looking at the delegation, the plane that was stuck in Poland. In terms of Derko, what's your assessment? What happened? Well, uh, it's important to indicate from our side uh, that Derko does not make the arrangements with respect to the president's security. This is left to the presidential protection uh, unit and the responsible party would be the Minister of Police. So I really think they're the ones who should speak on this matter. From the perspective of Durko, through the usual diplomatic mm. processes, we made arrangements mm. for meetings in Ukraine, all the protocol arrangements, all the necessary communication, and the fact that our meetings proceeded well uh, means that our ambassadors, Ambassador Makhlituga in uh, Russia mm -hmm. and Ambassador Khrunovald in Ukraine did, did their, their job. But uh, some people watching this drama that unfolded and clearly the Department of uh, Police will have to explain because they are responsible for the PPU. But in terms of affecting the relations between the two countries, because there was change of uh, statements sometimes that were very harsh, you know, particularly people who were on the ground. At the end of the day, you will have to deal with issues related to relations. If the relations have been affected, have you picked up anything from the Polish government? Uh, while we were in Poland, uh, we had several hours to wait uh, for the train that we were to take to uh, Ukraine. Yes, yes. And during the period in uh, Warsaw, we had uh, a meeting uh, with the leadership of Poland, and it went exceptionally well, to the degree that uh, we president has indicated a willingness mm. to undertake an official visit to mm. Poland. So at the level of government and Durko, of the president and Durko, everything went well. As to the other, I really don't wish to delve into it because I don't like guesswork and I think the appropriate uh, officials mm -hmm. would speak to that. Minister, today quite important one, Denmark and Netherlands. Indeed, uh, I received both prime ministers last night and uh, both are absolutely uh, thrilled to be here. Of course, Prime Minister uh, uh, of uh, the Netherlands has been here before Ritter and uh, has a deep interest and love for South Africa. Uh, the Prime Minister of uh, uh, Denmark, it's her first visit, but I do know, having met her before, uh, that she was a young lady from 12 involved in all the protests against apartheid mm -hmm. in her country. And she shared with me as we walked from the aeroplane to the car that it has been her dream to visit this country when it is free. And she's realizing her dream by being here. Minister, what will be high on the agenda? 
a range of things, um, both cultural as well as our big uh, issue, which you know, of mm. energy. Uh, we're looking at energy resources and support uh, for our particularly joint, uh, the uh, just energy transition, but also use of renewables. Denmark has gone a long way uh, with respect to clean energy resources. And so a number of Danish uh, uh, companies are here uh, to explore opportunities, but also to look at the hydrogen, uh, clean hydrogen uh, economy and to speak uh, to business leaders in South Africa about the hydrogen uh, plans and ensure that they partner with us as we set about a new cleaner energy environment. And finally, Minister, there's no way geopolitics won't be discussed. You're looking at these two countries, they are both members of NATO, and as you pointed out, you'd want more people to come in and uh, all the different stakeholders to put their heads together to ensure that you come up with a better, stronger approach in addressing the war in Ukraine. How important it is at this moment to host Denmark and the Netherlands both NATO member countries? Well, I think it's extremely important uh, from a range of perspectives. Uh, there's a great deal of interest in the BRICS summit uh, that will be held uh, in August mm -hmm. uh, this year in South Africa. Also uh, interest in G20. Mm -hmm. As you know, the Netherlands is an invitee to G20 and they're very keen um, to work with South Africa as South Africa prepares to assume the G20 chair in 2025. So huge interest, um, strong uh, uh, political links, and of course, everybody who wasn't in the room in Kiev and in St. Petersburg wants to know what we What discussed. happened? Exactly. So we had yesterday uh, my colleague, Minister Colonna, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, and she was asking me and I said, I don't, you know, tell, but here's a little bit. Uh, we will do a proper briefing uh, on the outcomes. Uh, next week, we're expecting our colleague from Germany. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to know, what did you discuss? What are the conclusions? Where to next? And I'm really saying to them, it's looking uh, promising, mm -hmm. but uh, it, these are preliminary stages, and we would like to walk this journey with you. Thank you so much, Minister. I guess you have a lot of work next week again to engage always, your counterparts. Always a lot of work. Thank you, Minister. That was the Minister of International Relations. As she pointed out, many countries are visiting South Africa at the diplomatic level. And I think this is an opportunity for the President or the Minister to communicate South Africa's position in relation to the war in Ukraine, but also uh, particularly after the visit to Kyiv and uh, to St. Petersburg. This is an opportunity to give a feedback. I think the only way you can find a solution to the war in Ukraine, it is when powerful nations come together, speak mm -hmm. with one voice to ensure that uh, the two uh, countries are able to find one another and they do agree to go to the negotiating table. And I think uh, this is an opportunity to do just that as the minister has pointed out that yesterday she hosted her counterpart from France. You know, President Macron, there are reports that he wants to attend the BRICS summit. And you also have a, a situation where Germany next week will be here, Minister Pando's pa counterpart from Germany. These are powerful nations. They are all members of NATO. This is an opportunity to speak to these countries. We know that NATO is being uh, accused of uh, uh, provoking or extending this uh, conflict because of the expansion. Back yeah. to you in studio. Thank you so much uh, for your time there, Sophie Mukwen. And of course, um, the issue around BRICS, a contentious one. The BRICS summit takes place in August. Will or will he not be here? That is Vladimir Putin.